this is the Sabella's Family Farms, and we've got kind of a big day today. Uh, Tom was doing an interview with Lindsay with the Cherokee Phoenix. And uh, started out, um, we kind of inherited the property here we're on. I was actually raised just down the road here, um, and then moved away, and then eventually uh, in 2004 my dad passed, and so we inherited some of this property that's been in our family for almost 100 years. And uh, so we had the property and we were starting to do things out here. We built the building, we did a, a small vineyard. We were trying to get a garden started and the first year or two was pretty rough. I mean, it looked like all this land was dug for coal back in the late 70s and they reclaimed it right away. So it has like very little topsoil and the rest is just shale. So we were working trying to get a garden going and and we were planning on moving out here eventually anyway. We lived in Claremore. And uh, so he, I decided, you know, I think, well, if we start, you know, having bees, that, that might help, you know, our garden and everything. And, and the first year uh, we had bees, it actually made a big difference in our garden production. So it's not only just, um, like, making honey or anything, it helps everything. Right, else. yeah. Okay. Yeah, bees are a fascinating creature. They. They pollinate things. They make honey that you can, you know, you leave them plenty for winter. You don't want to, you don't want to take more than what they need. But they will, if the, if there's enough uh, flow, which is what they call nectar coming in through the year, they'll store up three or four times more than what they need. So you're able to take that surplus and use it. And also, we also use beeswax. Uh, my wife makes candles and different lip balms and salves and stuff from that. We also collect bee pollen and uh, that's a, a real good uh, thing to take if you have bad allergies. Um, it kind of builds your immunity up to what you're allergic to. So there are several different things the bees do, but yeah, pollinating your garden and your fruit trees is one of the best uh, things that you can get from them, besides the honey. Okay. So do you sell the things that you make from the bees or do you uh, like, do you sell it on your own, or do you sell to, like, different businesses, or how does that work? Yeah, we started down, um, the first year where we were real lucky, we got one super full of honey, and giving it away to family and friends and whatever, you know, and we had honey for about a year. We didn't really sell much that year, and we kind of had a setback the second year, because we had a storm come through and blew our hives over, so we kind of had to start all over. So the second year, we didn't get any honey, so we, like, had honey, then didn't have honey. And uh, then the next year, we kind of built our hives up a little bit and started selling at a farmer's market. And uh, we did the farmer's market in Claremore uh, initially last year. I think it was our first first year of selling other than just to friends and family. And then uh, this year, we uh, applied and got accepted into the Cherry Street Farmer's Market in Tulsa, which is farmers market to end all farmers markets it's uh it's really amazing that people support it and uh, we've we've really done a good job we sell we're allowed to sell our candles our honey we have several different sizes of honey and we also do some other uh we got one deal we call nutty honey we put pecans and walnuts in a jar and then fill it up with honey and that's gotten to be a pretty good seller too so and we're hoping to expand all that, but yeah, every Saturday, starting in April, we've been at the Cherry Street Farmer's Market, and then we still sell to friends and church members and stuff like that. Um, can you tell me, like, what the process is, uh, like, how it all works for someone who doesn't know anything about Yeah, yeah, you start out, they recommend you to have two hives. You start out, you buy what they call a nucleus colony, which is five frames in a of bees and has different stages of brood and it'll have some honey and some pollen. And you start out with that and you put that in a bigger box which has 10 frames and then you let them build up. And the first year they tell you not to expect to get any honey because the bees have to build up and get ready for winter and you want to leave actually another box on top of that. You want it to leave it full of honey so they can make it through the next winter. And then the second year then you can start adding your extra boxes and hopefully make a proper honey from that. Um, 
So it's kind of a gradual process then. Just yeah. starting out and then building up. Yeah, it takes a little time and then and the learning process is real. I mean, I've been doing it five years. I'm still learning things to do to make it better. Um, the beekeeper actually, all he really does in managing a hive is try to give the bees what they need actually before they need it. So it's kind of, if you wait, procrastination is the worst thing you can do in beekeeping because if, if you wait too long to do something, then they're going to change, they're going to do whatever they need to do to survive. So if you don't put an extra box on there when they need it, then they get congested and then half of them will leave and go find a new home. So you're, you're apt to lose part of your hive if you're not ahead of the schedule for the bees. So is it a year-round process or is it seasonal? How does that work? You have busier times of year. Usually the spring is fairly busy. And then uh, once you get all your, you know, your supers on, you don't have to check them as often. But in, in the spring, you want to check them pretty regular to kind of keep them from swarming give them what they need and then uh, most people usually extract around the first of July uh, most people just stack their boxes up and then pull it all off and extract it at one time and then after that it's kind of you know there's not a whole lot goes on up through winter but it depends on everybody does beekeeping a little different I do it a little different I do two or three extractions through the year and that way you can get like we did an extraction about a month ago and we got some real light colored honey and then the next extraction we'll do the honey will be a little darker and then sometimes in the fall it can get real dark so you can get some they're working on different flowers so you can get some different uh, flavors of honey too. Um, so what is the name of your is it your business or are you a part of a group or association or okay. anything like that? We have what we call our our main business here is Ellis Family Farms and that's our YouTube channel name. Um, the honey part of it and the bees I call Super Bee Honey Farms. And then my wife and granddaughter, the candles and the salves and lip balm and everything they do, they call it Kinsey's Candles and Creams and that's named after my granddaughter. So our, our banner at the farmers market says Ellis Family Farms but we have Super Bee Honey and then we have Kinsey's Candles and Creams. Okay, so it's like one big business, but you have like this little divisions sub of division it. Right. Of it. Okay. Right. Um, and you're able to just like make a living off of what you do? Like, no, I actually work, work a full-time job. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I'm hoping to graduate eventually to retire from my full-time job and, and do this as a, okay. as a, a full-time business. But right now it, it just, you know, it's extra yeah, income. Awesome. It, the farm's making money where before we spent a lot of money and didn't make a whole lot. But uh, we also sell eggs at the farmer's market, and uh, so that helps too. So, Is there anything else you want to add or let people know? Oh, just, uh, you know, honeybees a fascinating, fascinating creature to learn about. Um, the more you learn about it, the more, the more I believe that can't deny that there's a true God because the way it all works together is with nature. It's just didn't happen by chance. It's uh, it's pretty fascinating. The honeybee is the only insect that provides food for man to consume. Um, honey doesn't ever spoil. It you know they pulled it out of the pyramids when they opened the pyramids up. It was 2,000 years old and it's still still good and. Uh, if it ever does crystallize, which some people think it's going bad when it crystallizes, it's just turning into sugar, raw sugar, which is mostly what honey is, two different kinds of sugar. And to reconstitute it, all you have to do is heat it up to about 100 degrees, and it'll liquefy again, and, it, and it's good for, for as long as it... If it doesn't crystallize, if you bought it from the store and it doesn't crystallize, then it's not pure raw honey because because some of the stuff you buy at the store in Oklahoma it only has to be 10% real honey to be labeled as honey so it can be 10% honey and the rest of it can be corn syrup or so just always read your label whenever you buy honey and preferably support a local beekeeper and you know where 
know where your honey's coming from. Probably takes the difference as well, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's really a lot, and it's good for you too. Honey has a lot of good yeah, health quality, that, qualities. Yeah, it, um, a lot of people take it for allergies too. Um, it has a little bit of pollen in it if, if it's not been super filtered. And it has also good enzymes in it that helps with your stomach digestion. Um, some people actually mix it with different things like cinnamon or apple cider vinegar to control different um, different problems, you know, medically that you can have. It's actually, uh, they're actually using it in hospitals now. They put it on a bandage, they call it medicinal honey. They put it on a bandage and like if you're susceptible to infection, and they do a surgery on you, well they'll put this bandage on there and they'll wrap it and you leave it on there for seven days, you don't take it off. And they say when you pull it off, you know, you don't have any infection. Or, or, so it's got some real good antibacterial properties too. So when you extract honey, do you have to uh, take it through some kind of process before you can sell it or can you just sell it as raw honey? How does that work? Yeah, actually what we do is we take the frames that has uh, full of honey on each side and they're capped over with wax cappings. You know what a cell looks like. It's kind of octagon shape. You cut all those cappings off, and then you put it in a, a machine that spins it real fast. And as it's spinning, the honey, the gravity forces the honey away from the comb and actually runs out on the wall of the extractor and then runs down to the bottom. And then you pour it out of that into a bucket. And I actually usually filter it as I'm pouring it out. And uh, that's all we do is we have a coarse filter and then underneath it a finer filter and that just gets wax particles you're going to have a few bee legs or you know parts in there that will filter out and so on the bottom end you're getting uh, filtered raw honey so it's not been heated it's not been uh, is that's it the worst filtered or strained same thing it's not highly it's not super filtered it's just okay. yeah run through up i forget how many they grade filters by there's a number, and it's probably uh, 80 or 100 is the, how fine the, field, the screen is. So, so you're letting most of the good stuff through and just filtering out wax particles and things you don't want, you know, to get on your toast or your and biscuit that's, or whatever. that's the honey that gets sold. Yeah, right. yeah. And from there, then we bottle it, and uh, it's, that's all that's done to it. You know, refrigerate it, you know, heat it, you know, yeah. Actually, heating honey, like in the microwave, is the worst thing you can do because that actually kills the good things in the honey. It'll still taste like honey and it'll be sweet, but it won't have all the good properties if you heat it too hot. Okay. Um, is there anything else you want to add or let people know? Um, that's all the questions I have for you. Oh, it's just uh, you can get into it as a hobby and it's a lot of fun and, you know, you get some honey off the side and, and, uh, it's just a neat, uh, a neat creature to learn about. And then, is, is there a lot that goes into it financially, just to keep up with everything? Yeah, we expanded this year. We went from 25 hives last year to 85 this year. So the 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 big biggest expense is buying more equipment. You have to have more boxes. You have to have more frames for the bees to get in and build up. So that's the most. Ex you know, biggest expense as far as expanding is uh, just adding more equipment and and just keeping up with uh, with the growth. You know. And you said you hope to expand in the future as well. Yeah, I wouldn't mind getting up to in the next year or two, maybe like 200 hives. And you know, this past year we sent 14 to California to pollinate the almond trees. We got I work with some commercial beekeepers and. And sometimes they have extra room on their trucks, so you can. Um, we sent 14 over there, and when they came back, when they came back to Texas, we took those. I think we ended up with about 45. We you, you split them, so you'll take one hive and you'll make four out of one hive if, if it's good enough in the spring, early spring. So that's a way of increasing your numbers. And, uh, so we did pretty good this year, and we're hoping to maintain and not lose too many. You're always going to lose some hives through the year, 
but uh, you hope to recoup those losses in the spring when you do your splits or what they call it. Yeah. Which I would would like to eventually get to where I can retire and and do that full time. Do you know about how long that might take? Just as, just the way you're going right now. Or do you have like a timeline, or is it just? Yeah, just going to be how it goes. I mean, I'd like to maybe in a couple of, in no more than two years, have 200 eyes and be able to, you know, um, try to start retiring from there. Do you hope to, I don't know, maybe start working with businesses that, you know, to sell your honey to different businesses or I don't know how that works? Yeah, we've actually got one deal in the works that's supposed to start uh, about the first week of August. It's um, been postponed. It's probably going to be closer okay. to November now. Okay. But, yeah, we actually have uh, a little bit of honey on some retail space right now. But uh, that might be something once we get um, our honey production up a little more. Um, we're selling about everything we can now at the market, which is a good thing. But uh, someday, you know, if we have more honey than what we know what to do with, then, yeah, I wouldn't mind being in some retail space. So that's what I would hold. Mm -hmm. to expand in that way as well. That's right, yeah. yeah. So you said you have a YouTube. Um, is there any other social media or any other ways people can find out about your business? Yeah, we have a Facebook page. We have a Facebook page for Ellis, um, Ellis Family Farms and for Super Bee Honey and one for Kenzie's Candles. And, uh, Personal. and I do some stuff on Instagram also. Okay, is it all under the same name, different name? Uh, no. The YouTube channel is Ellis Family Farms, okay? No, no. it's just YouTube channel is Ellis Family Ellis Farms. Family Farms. Yeah. The, the uh, I do I do have a, web, a website, EFFOK.com. And I'll give you one of our business cards, uh, okay. so, or a couple of them if you want. Uh, yeah. And it has a YouTube channel on the back, and then it has my information on the front. Okay. So. And I noticed on your shirt it says, Beekeepers Association, is that also uh -huh. something you're a part of? Yeah, um, that's actually who we took our, our original beekeeping course through, is Northeast Oklahoma Beekeepers Association. Okay. And they're, we meet in Tulsa once a month, and they have like 500 members, I think. It's a big, a big group. But they normally have about 120 people every month that comes to the meetings, and uh, it's a real good uh, source if anybody's interested in becoming a beekeeper. They offer classes twice a year and uh, it's uh, if you want to write I think they're neoba.org mm -hmm. n-e-o-b-a dot org dot org uh -huh. okay. well one of the things that we've discovered as as we've been getting into bees and stuff like that too a lot of people need mentors they're going I don't know what you know you take the classes you look at the pictures you do all this stuff you can watch videos and everything but then you're going, I don't know what I'm doing when I get into my own hive. So, they, so they've been kind of having a little bit of trouble finding mentors, you know, because everybody's busy. They're, they're going, they, people try to call Tom to say, please come look at my hives, you know. So what I want to do is I want to have some hives here on the property and once a month maybe have classes where they can come out and say, okay, this, is, that, that, this day we're going to prepare our hives for winter. This day we're going to uh, see if they're ready to swarm or something like that. I want to have something throughout the year like hands-on hands-on yeah. so people come out and take classes and stuff of course i'm going to video it but so these people can actually see know what to look for when they get into their hives when they go home so that's what i would like to do out here okay. eventually okay yeah and we've got several people that come to the farmer's market you know say oh do you do a lot of people come out to your farm or whatever so there's an interest for it okay. you know. so that's and, something you want to build off of the interest in mm -hmm. people who want to learn more about it um, is there anything, anything else? else? Um, that's all I had for you. Uh, I think, I think that's it. If you want to, or you want to go yeah, get into a hive, yeah, we can do that. There.
Well, Angie did a really good job in that hive, and I hope I have sound for that. I may not have sound because he showed her a lot of really, really cool stuff. But I think I forgot to turn the microphone on. I gotta get used to this external microphone. But she did an excellent job. She didn't panic. She stayed calm and did a really good job. I was really proud of her for, for being in a beehive for the first time. Tom has brought her down here to the south end of the property where all these beehives were that came up from Texas here a couple months ago. And uh, we're not going to stay here, but he was wanting to show her where some of his hives are down here. And I'm sure he's told about the ones that we have in some remote, of the remote locations around Ulaga Lake. But this is cool. This has been a pretty good interview for her. I, I think she's going to like it.